Hello everyone, welcome to just another episode of Just My Thoughts. Um, just waking up this morning, I'm still a little, I'm still getting into it. Um, it's been a while, it's been like two weeks since our last episode, so I wanted to come in and give you guys something, or I don't know, there is no guys, but uh I don't know. I just I haven't done it in a while. I want to get back to it. Um, part of this has been an exercise because I'm what they call blast last. That basically means I'm not so vocal when it comes to sharing information. Um, like I don't like to speak. I guess very much. Um, Anyway, I don't even want to get too far into it. Anyway, so this is sort of like practice. It's also therapeutic and a way for me to sort of uh, just share my thoughts. So, um, had realization recently. Uh, I've been kind of bumping heads. Um, I want to say lately, but it's really been going on for about the past year. Um, it started off kind of slow here or there, here and there, and now it's becoming, it's ramped up more. Um, just bumping heads with like this, um, this guy I work with, as well as my wife. And um, both of them actually are feelers they save your feeling and they both have masculine thinking and I think that's part of why I'm triggering them um, but yeah I've just been having issues with that uh, I've gotten a bit better about um, smoothing out my wife that's like uh, I've gotten better but the, the guy I work with <laughs> that has not gotten better it's actually gotten worse because I think he's he's I kind of hit on a yeah I don't I don't know how that's going to resolve itself but uh basically I, I figured it out the other day what's going on there I was I was watching some old um videos from the objective personality uh community and there's this guy Benjamin or Benjamin, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, he's a lead TI, he's an IS, ISTP, so he's like lead uh, thinking, cyber thinking, masculine thinking at that. So, uh, basically he was telling a story, and I I'd heard him tell this story actually like on three different podcasts, so I, I think it was a big like revelation for him. Um, he was telling a story about like when he was in school when he was younger he had this problem he ran into where um he thought to make friends he would just show them like hey i'm smarter than you and you'll want to be my friend which i mean i guess it's elementary school junior high school like i guess logically i can kind of see how you might have got to that conclusion at young um he was like, yeah, I, I, you know, I'll show you I'm smarter than you and you'll want to be friends with me. And, of course, that's not how that worked out. Uh, he said that basically people would get upset and he made enemies and then his enemies would get together and try to destroy him. And he said he would get into fights, like, on a daily basis because people would be waiting after school to fight him. And he said it got so bad that, like, he was fighting kids from like uh different classes that he didn't even um he didn't even know the kids just wanted to fight him and he finally had figured out you know after so long of going through this on a daily basis he sat down one day and, and worked it out and was trying to figure it out and he figured out that like that's what the issue was and he also says that uh he he thinks that it's like biological 
like there's something in a human DNA that um it it makes you want to be the alpha. Well, people are sort of aware, even on a um, unconscious level. Usually, probably usually more so on the unconscious level of the alpha, like the the leader, the best of the best, or whatever. And he was like, by him going around trying to show he was smarter, it was like him un unconsciously issuing challenges to be the alpha. And um, that's what he believes triggered everything. Um, I can see where he's coming from on that. Like, I, I've never really given it much thought. I'm not like, you know, into the whole alpha male thing or whatever, but I can see what he's saying. Like, if, if, if I look at that and then I look at a lot of behavior that like doesn't really make sense to me that I've seen over the years. It kind of does look like trying to peacock to be the alpha, you know. Oh my god. I haven't had coffee in like two weeks, so this is like ambrosia to me. delicious so um anyway I think that's what was going on um not with my wife I don't think that she took it like that because females have their own alpha I think she did recognize it on a level because she she made a statement and comparing it to this context that statement makes more sense like I took this statement as a uh, um as a compliment even though I don't think she intended it like that. She told me, I'm trying to remember her exact wording. She said, um, you, she said, you sling around a lot of weight in both the physical and the intellectual realm. And, um, At first, I thought she was trying to say, like, you're fat. Well, I mean, I am a big dude. But uh, she was like, no. She said, the way I carry myself is very... I guess the way I move, I have this, like, really confident... And actually, she described me as very... Out. She said I have alpha male energy. I guess the way I move, and I, I seem extremely confident and whatnot. And when I sit down, I tend to, like, spread out like take up more room as necessary um so i i am i think giving off those signs um and again it's not something i'm really trying to do like uh if anything i just try to be comfortable when sitting and i mean yeah i suppose i do move confidently but shouldn't everybody move confidently like <laughs> i don't know but i will say the other guy I was having issues with, as we recently got into it, he told me, he said, um, you think you're smarter than everybody else? I said, dude, I, I don't feel like that. I was like, I, I can guarantee you I don't feel like that. Yes, you do. And I was like, dude, I, I'm in here. You're not in here. I'm in here. I can 100% guarantee you that's not how I feel. I was like, I've never even said anything like that. And he's like, you don't have to say it. Everybody can see it. Everybody can see it in the way you act, the way you move. And I think that's what he was alluding to. Um, and again, yeah, that's not that's not really what I'm trying to do. But looking at it, like taking a step back and looking at it in this context, I believe that's what that's what he's saying. Um, and yeah, that's not what I'm trying to do. But it trying to convince somebody of that is yeah <laughs> so um yeah I recently realized that's what was going on and I I think the reason that's going on is because uh after like getting objectively typed and learning what my saviors were and my demons are 
and my saviors were really weak um so like kind of going through and trying to get better at using those which i have um i have been really trying to exercise my te my thinking extroverted thinking and perhaps i will say my blasts increase drastically because the te is related to blast my dra my blast increased drastically when um when i started doing that and i did kind of catch myself saying stuff that i wouldn't normally do because like i said i'm blast last so i'm not really I'm really reluctant to talk, like, to share certain information. Um, so, yeah, normally I might have just thought it, but I just knew it and never said anything. I found myself, as I started using my saviors more, almost slightly uncontrollably um, outbursts, like, saying stuff. Um, and he did call me on that a couple of times. Like, oh, you can't be correcting people. I was like, dude, I'm not trying to correct people. Um, but I noticed you have some missing, missing information. I'm just trying to give you the, uh, correct information, you know? And, uh, even my wife has told me just yesterday we were talking about this. Um, she said that I'm not really intentionally trying to go around correcting people but at the same time i am doing so um so she pointed that out to me i do kind of see it i'm trying to uh, about last week and a half i've been trying to pull back on that anyway um just getting a firmer control over that but yeah so that i in some way yeah, I definitely see what he's saying, um, but, and I tried to tell him this before, not in relation to this, but in other stuff, intention matters. Like, he feels like intention doesn't matter. If you do something that upsets me or do something that he considers fucked up, for lack of a better word, um, then that's all that matters. You you deal with the consequences, and I, I don't feel like that. I feel like intention definitely matters like if somebody does something unintentionally you really shouldn't make a big deal about it it was unintentional but of course i'm also talking to a feeler and they simply embrace the emotion hence they want to destroy you so yeah so that has been interesting like dealing with these uh but just now even realizing I'm having thinker tidal waves. That's what they call it in the objective personality where like uh, if you're having problems due to a function, uh, usually it's lack of use of a function. Like savior fillers usually have uh, thinking tidal waves because they're not thinking enough and they're usually leaving a gap there um and usually <laughs> they expect the other person in their life or not even in home situations not even um just that though they expect somebody else to fill in those gaps because you feel responsible for your saviors you don't feel responsible for your demons so um having those think or thinker tidal waves uh usually fillers have them but you can also have them in the reverse, like I'm having now, where I'm actually overusing that function and not really, I guess, using my filling function enough to kind of counterbalance that. And I'm having issues with the tribe, tribe being anybody outside of myself that I'm dealing with, um, where I'm having now, where there's basically like issues with my wife and this guy, um. And I say my wife loosely, like, I think we've kind of ironed out our, our, uh, rough edges or whatever, but this dude, I don't think he's going to let it go. Um, I don't know. I'll, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to resolve itself. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> realizing 
just came to this realization the other day. I've been having thicker tidal waves. Um, so there's that. Also, I realized something yesterday. Um, I'm always talking to my wife about how feelers have such subjective point of views. And I was thinking about this, and I don't even think it's just feelers. I think it's deciders in general. Um, deciders are people that either have a first feeling or a uh, that have a feeling or a thinking function first, right? Um, so I was realizing that their sub their point of view is so subjective, um, the way they view things and. I was realizing that, of course, like it made perfect sense. Um, because if you have a thinking or a feeling few, uh, feeling function, it's your first function. Basically, the two in the middle, which is sort of like, it's kind of a big thing, like the two in the middle, because they're, they're how you kind of balance yourself. Because you're, you're going to be sort of your first function is your dominant function the two in the middle is sort of like help you counterbalance that and then your last function is typically um throwing you out of balance because you're not good at it it's the one that's uh usually people are most reluctant to use because you got to go for all the other three to get there and yeah so if you have a thinking or a feeling function in the front that means you are what they call a double observer so you basically have feeling in the front and then you're gonna have a sensing and an intuition in the middle and then the thinking on the end and if you're a thinker you're gonna have a thinking in the front a sensing and an intuition somewhere in the middle depending on whichever one comes first and then a feeling on the end so hence thinkers can sometimes be considered unemotional because their feeling function is all the way on the end and uh thinkers i mean fillers can consider i wouldn't say dumb they're definitely not dumb but they don't always think things out um so they can be looked at that because their thinking is all the way on the end now what helps if you happen to be fortunate enough like the two people i'm talking about um they are both savior fillers, but they're, they have masculine thinking. So even though it's on the end, your masculine function is always, I shouldn't say always in play, but if you're not using, you use it a lot because it's masculine. So uh, there's a saying like, saviors are king. You have to do your saviors no matter what. They're there your entire life. Masculines are queen. So basically, uh, if you're not doing your saviors, you're going to do your masculines. Um, so that does give them both a great advantage in that even though it's on the end, it's hard to get to for most people. They're, they're still using it a lot more. Um, then you can be somebody who like <clears throat> they have saviors and their first two functions or their first their saber functions are masculine then you got somebody that's just super top heavy i work with a guy like that uh super top heavy like he's a savior um te and this like you talking about me having thinking title waves this guy has thinking title waves like he is the most hated individual i think i've ever met um people do not like him i've heard people wish death upon this guy and it's just yeah i i wouldn't say with good cause because i mean i don't know if there's good cause to wish death upon somebody but i can understand why he's hated like if you interact with this guy you're just like man this guy's a piece of shit and i don't know if that's always his intent i will say he does doesn't mind pulling rank on you but at the same time sometimes i think he's just trying to get his job done too 
but because he's not a savior thinking, he's not using his feeling, he doesn't take that into regard. He doesn't take people into regard. And yeah, I don't want to get too far off into that, but. Also, if you guys have noticed, if you guys watch this, um, how I stop thoughts or, um, so I'll be talking and just sort of like, and then drift off or like multiple thoughts coming out. That's, that's because I'm last last. That's what I mean. Like I'm not used to. Like, in your head, you don't really have to do it like this. Like, everything's kind of going on at once. But because I don't, I'm not used to really openly sharing and stuff like that, like, it comes out. It can be kind of hard for people to understand. Um, that's why I say I'm not good at explaining things. Um, and again, this is sort of like to help me practice with that. Um, being Blast Last, though, I think... Of all of them, I think it's the best. Um, because you can get shit done as blast last. If I had to be consumed last, that sucks. If I had to be sleep last, that most definitely sucks. And if I... Uh, consume, sleep... What's the other one? Oh, play. I don't quite understand what play last does. But I don't think play last would be too bad. Anyway, um, let me think. What else did I miss? Shit, I lost my train of thought. Well, I don't know. It'll come to me. But the guy I'm getting into it at work who has masculine feeling, he has masculine T.I., Man, T.I. is fucking impressive. This guy, <laughs> I call it like doing long division. Like he's, this guy is basically like tracking everything I do and like putting it together and trying to use it to, it's sort of like if you ever see a movie where it's like the police trying to catch like a bad guy or something. And they got like the wall and it's got the photos disconnecting stuff and it's got um evidence all on the wall that that's what it sounds like what he's doing in his head because like, i talk to him like we talk on a daily basis and i can tell like sometimes it'll come out and this guy is like tracking everything and i'm just like fuck man like it feels weird to know somebody's kind of plotting your downfall while at the same time talking on a daily basis like he's a very no disrespect to women he's a very feminine guy like a lot of his ways just seem so female like and um again I don't mean to disrespect but I mean that to say men and women usually have a different way of like processing um and dealing with conflict and like i much prefer the guy way because i'm a guy i'm used to like if there's a problem we'll just address the problem and that's it like you know let's air out the grievances or if we gotta fight well let's just do what we gotta do and um you know be done with it as opposed to him with all this like weird passive aggressive energy and just us uh, it feels slightly vile um i guess that's because i'm a guy i don't know i don't know But anyway, um, it's interesting when talking to him, though. I can see his, uh, 
his thought process as we talk. Like, I'm, I'm putting it together. It's interesting. Like, just like he's tracking me, I'm also tracking him. So, when we speak, I'm just tracking him in a different way. I'm looking at different things. And um, when we speak, I've been noticing, like, he's seeing things that is correct. He's 100% correct. Like, fucking having masculine feeling, I thought was kind of a... Uh, it's an advantage and a disadvantage. It's an advantage because it's very thorough um, and it, it wants to be correct and it's very good at what it does. Um, I guess that's because it's masculine. Plus, I think he also has double masculine sleep like myself and I think that's helping him out as well. But he's he's seeing things. He's like, well, you're you're uh doing this he like he was like man you live in la la land um you're not in the real world which is kind of true like um i have masculine intuition like i'm always off in my head i do have a more idealistic view on the world um so yeah that's kind of true uh he has a more down to earth pragmatic view. Um, this is just because the way our functions work out. Um, I think you have masculine sensory. So, like, basically, if you have masculine intuition, you're going to be up kind of in the clouds. So, masculine intuition keeps you more, I mean, masculine sensory keeps you more grounded, right? And as I've been realizing this lately, like, perception, perception is reality. So, I come to the conclusion everybody sort of has their own reality. I'll try to remember to come back to that. But, um, yes, he is correct. Like, I am not seeing things right. Um, I am not seeing things in the way he's seeing them. Like, and I'm very glad for that because, one, yes, I am in La La Land. That's true. Um, but he sees things in the most... In the worst, the worst fashion, you know, um, he, he's, he's, everything is like racial based to him. Like, fuck that shit. Like, yeah, I do not think that everybody's racist, this, that, whatever. Like, yeah, the race, race basically almost means nothing to me. Like, I have such a outward and objective point of view that race means nothing to me um but to him it means everything so that's a big reason why we kind of we kind of uh end up on odds but yeah he's right he's like oh you're 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 living out in la la land this that whatever like i could see and i've, I've experienced this with my wife as well both of them clearly are seeing me. What they're seeing is accurate. Um, and it's weird to me because I'm like, I was not really tracking that about other people. I've like only recently just begun doing that. Um, and I guess that's because, anyway. Um, so it's, it's weird to me that I'm so transparent to them uh that that's a little scary um but what what's shocking about this is even though they're thinking that masculine thinking is working beautifully and um figuring this stuff out <clears throat> because they're savior feelers they got the information, right? They got the information. But because they have a decider function, it has to filter through this subjective lens. So they're basically taking all this and trying to filter it through this hole. And that's what I'm seeing. Because um, he... I can see him trying to make sense of it. 
he's like, well, he's assigning reasons as to why, as to why, um, I'm doing what I'm doing or I'm thinking how I'm thinking. And it's hard for him to understand that people think differently. Like, I think he understands. No, he's, he's told me he understands people think differently, but he doesn't think there's a big difference. He thinks there's a, like a slight difference. Um, so he can't really understand how. I'm thinking so differently. So he's he's assigning me reasons. He keep throwing things at the board, trying to assign me reasons. Like, oh, wait, no, you're a misogynist, or you you hate your own people, or you know, insert random thing here. And it, it's like he has his information, and he's trying to make the information make sense from his point of view. And I think it pisses him off that I keep telling him every time he accuses me of being this or that, I keep telling him, nope, nope. <laughs> and that, that I think is pissing him off. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And uh, I had him run across that with my wife at certain points. Definitely not as bad, though. And usually we talk it out. And um, my wife is, is a bit more understanding, like, because she knows me more uh closely you know she's my wife so she she kind of sees like okay yeah no you're just your view your point of view is just very different so yeah um but for him even though I keep trying to express this to him it's much harder for him to understand because I think for you to kind of come to that understanding it has to, you have to understand that everybody doesn't necessarily have the same point of view as you. And also, everybody, um, everybody doesn't see things the same way. <clears throat> and I think that's much more difficult to, for him because I think because he's a, 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 savior uh sensing so like things have to be kind of grounded for him and i suspect this is what jordan peterson was saying when he said when you're high in openness and you're talking to someone who's not who's basically low in openness um it's like trying to explain color to somebody who's colorblind i suspect this is what he's referring to um and I say that because I've noticed several times when talking, and again, I'm high in openness, so I'm like, I want to discuss ideas, I want to discuss concepts. Um, and when I do this to him, I often get a, I often get a blank stare in response. And um, yeah, I can tell like I, I lost him and I think this also triggers something in him too because usually those functions that you have your demon functions you're kind of uh if they're thinking or they're the sensing or intuition doesn't really so much matter it'll it'll be a demon in a way but you're thinking or feeling whichever one of those you have um as a demon function you will be insecure about okay so um i think he's insecure about his thinking because he says this all the time oh you think i ain't smart as you you think um i can't keep up with you and it's like no i've never had that thought i've never even considered that thought you know um and he he'll he'll say stuff like my mind is slow to get going, but when it gets going, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take me a little longer to get there, but I'm going to get there. And again, him seeing this, this is a reference between, the, what this is, is like the difference between T.E. and T.I. T.I. will take its time. T.I. doesn't like the T.I. in front of people. And I'm getting a better understanding of what that means when people say that. But basically, uh, it means that 
they're going to sleep on it. Like, they're not really going to um, have the answers right then and there. Um, because their thinking is very personal. Um, so they're going to wait, go home, consider it, and then come back and give you a reply or whatever. Um, TE has no problem just jumping in. That's what he tells me all the time. Wait, I like to make sure I know what I'm talking about. You just like jump in there. And I'm like, well, I feel like I know what I'm talking about as well. But it again, hard for him to see that from my perspective. Um, shit. I gotta stop doing this in the morning. Like, my mind is foggy. Uh, where was I going with this? So, differences between how we're processing. Um, yeah, that's an insecurity for him. So I think that's also why I triggered him so bad. And um, yeah, it's it's causing difficulty. I really do not want. I I like this guy. Like even though he's got very feminine tendencies, I do like talking to him. I, he's like the guy I really talk to. It's him and his other guy, too. I talk to on a daily basis. But he's really making this shit difficult. Um, shit, where was I going? I don't know. It's gone. It's gone. Um, But, yeah, there's just some of the differences I've been noticing between us. Um, and, again, I'm dealing with this tidal wave, which uh, I really would like to go away. It's fucking annoying. I don't care for it. Um, and, again, it, it is partly my fault from just overusing my saviors and not really paying attention to the tribe. Um so that that's a lesson learned. Uh, also, you think what else? Oh, I recently realized something about being a double observer, which I mean a double decider, which is what I am. So that basically means I have an observing function as my first function, and I have my thinking and feeling functions in the middle, and then I, I have a, a observing function on the end. So in my case, I have extroverted sensing. Um, in the front, and then I have FI introverted feeling, and then I have TE extroverted thinking, and then I have uh, NI introverted intuition on the end. And um, basically, this makes me a double decider. So what this means is I have observing function, and then I'm going to my two deciders, which is basically me and the tribe. Uh, how I feel about something and how I think the tribe feels about something and I'm weighing those things out um, those middle functions really make a big difference so basically what this means is because I have those two in the middle people uh, are not really a big deal to me for the most part like I'm having this issue with him but it's it's an annoyance I'm never like um, how people are like, man, I got to destroy this person or uh, like I'm never getting too worked up about people. That's the benefit of being a devil decider. Um, now, if you're a devil observer, then people bother you. But being a devil decider, people don't bother me. Things bother me. Uh, systems bother me. Like when I just have to start my line more. And I couldn't get it to right do I couldn't get it to work even though I did everything correctly. And then just I feel this rage come out. Um also like badly designed systems. So like uh there's a raising canes not too far from us that we go to sometimes. And the system they have, like when they designed this raising canes, which is like a restaurant, um the line like loops around the building and the way they constructed it to go in it's very it's shit it's shit whoever the architect who came out with this design thought this shit would work 
is horrible. Shit like that infuriates me. Um, or even to my wife's dismay, I'm very critical at work. Um, and this is what partly why uh, I can see the flaws in our system. So to her, it does come off like I'm shitting on the people who are running the place. And I suppose I am in a sense, but it's not really that I'm shitting on them as much as the system and they're the ones in power that could change the system. Um, but yeah, for the most part, people don't bother me. Uh, if anything, I find people very amusing um, and very fascinating. Um, so yeah. But the other part, I realized um, the connection to this yesterday was because I'm so balanced on that, because I'm a double decider, and also I have one of my, my demon function is masculine, my savior is feminine, so it means I'm constantly doing both, both of those two. Um, I'm also very objective. Uh, I was I'm, I'm objective when it comes to people because of that, but be, I think because I'm constantly doing those two so much, I'm even much more objective, right? So like, let's say, all right, let's use the metaphor of a, a chessboard because I have a chessboard right here. Um, yeah, several pieces on the chessboard. So let's say these are people interacting in the world, right? And let's say I was the king. So I'm I'm the king. I'm interacting with knights, pawns, or whatever. And we're all on the chessboard doing our thing, right? That that I think is the experience of most people. Um, you're a piece, and you're trying to go about doing your business, and then you have conflict with another piece, who is also going about doing their business too. But when you have conflict, they're taking it in a very subjective manner, like, oh, but this guy's trying to stop me, and. Then they start assigning reasons as to why this guy is trying to stop me. Uh, he just wanted to screw me over or he never liked me or stuff like that. Which is like how it is, I think, to be a decider. Um, I mean, with a deciding function first. So be either lead thinking or lead feeling. Right? As a double decider, I don't really have that issue. Um, I'm very objective. I'm able to see like, yeah, this guy, I'm having conflict with this guy, but... It may not be um, because he's personally got something against me or he wants to do this, wants to do that. Um, it might just be he's trying to go out of our business and our things just happen to go against each other. Like, it's not personal to me. Like, I'm very objective about that, right? So, in that regard, being a double decider, I would kind of be the king instead of like a knight or a pawn and the king all the other pieces are kind of moving around and you're the guy who objectively is kind of running it but because of having the masculine and feminines fall where they fall for my type i'm even more objective um so i'm not a piece anymore i'm sort of like the person playing the pieces right so I'm moving the pieces, doing this and doing that. I am objectively so far removed from my, uh, in a way I'm very far removed from my life. Um, so a lot of times in life, I feel like I'm watching, and this is, this is again, partly why people seem like amusing and fascinating to me, it's because I'm so removed from them. Um, so because I'm so removed they're interesting to me um, it's hard to describe I'll, I'll start with me a good amount of time it's like I'm watching my own life go past 
I'm watching my own life. Like as if I was watching TV. Like I'm watching my own life kind of go. Um, and it's like this with people too. Like I'm watching people and I'm so outside of like the whole thing that I'm just like, Huh, I wonder what their motivations are. I wonder what made them do that. Hmm. And I think I think this is annoying to other people in a sense. Like realizing this, I kinda 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 see how this might be annoying for my wife. <clears throat> because uh she'll get upset about something. And I'll, she'll be like, oh, I'm upset because of this, that, whatever. And I'll say something like, are you sure? Are you sure you're not upset for this other reason that has nothing to do with what you're talking about right now? And she'll get very upset with me. And she'll be like, don't tell me why I'm upset. And, um, yeah, because I'm so removed from the process, to me, it appears like, Oh, this is a much deeper issue than what you see. You're only looking at the surface level. Um, and I realize, I do realize I'm probably not explaining this well. Again, I'm not good at explaining things. Again, I'm blast last. So, um, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, I'm, I feel like I'm able to see so many things because I'm just so detached from life, from the world, from my own life, in a, in a sense. And um, I was looking at a video with a, a fellow observer, uh, this guy, Reggie. I really like him. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, I kind of look at him as almost like my counterbalance in a way. He's a, a observer like myself. He's a ENFP. And um, I've talked to him. Pretty cool guy. And he, I've noticed in different interviews, he's kind of said the same thing. He feels detached. He feels like he's watching his own life go by. And I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely relate to that. Like, I think it's just an observer thing. And I don't, I don't think it's just because you're an observer. I think in a, it's sort of like, all right, um, okay. And, and again, back to the chess analogy, a tech ana chess analogy, right? You have pawns, then you have pieces, right? So your pawns, I'm assuming you guys understand chess. Um, your pawns are just your pawns. They can only move forward, right? Then your pieces, which is your rook, your knight, your bishop, king, and queen, they can move in different directions, okay? I think if you're, again, no offense meant, uh, this is just sort of trying to relate the point of view. If you're, if you are uh, a decider, you're basically moving from a pawn's perspective. You're moving forward. Um, that's pretty much it, right? Now, if you're a double decider, um, which is what I am, you're a piece. You can move forward, but you can move in different directions, right? Now, if you happen to have a savior, a feminine savior function, uh, you're a devil decider, so you happen to have whatever your savior function has to happen to be feminine, and your demon has to be masculine, which means it's going to balance out again. Um, on a higher level and it's gonna, you're going to be using both of those so much that puts you outside of a peace function that puts you as the guy playing chess right so it's like three levels one the decider two the double decider three the double decider that has like a feminine um, a feminine saber function and a masculine demon function both Reggie and I fall in that category and I think that's why the two of us uh, experience that um, I mean obviously not we're not the only two in the world but 
I've I've seen other interviews with deciders, and I don't really see that that come up as much. So yeah, I think that in a way is the gift and the curse of being a devil decider. It allows you to be more objective when dealing with people, but it can get to the point like us where it's so objective that you're kind of removed from life in a sense. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm sure this is probably not making sense at all. Oh my God. I, I, know, this is, I know this is very abstract. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm trying to do my best to explain this. I know this is very abstract. I'm blast last. So I'm like the worst person to try to explain this to. To try to explain this. But I'm the only one here. So sorry. <laughs> if, you know what? If the one person that actually probably watches this. If you have any questions. Send me a comment. I will happily try to explain it. It's the best I can do. Um, so, yes. So, in the game of life, just to review, most people are actively in the game of life on the chessboard. Um, I am often in the player watching the, the game go by. Um, Dis disattached from the world um, disattached from my own life to be honest and um, again I don't really mind that the The downside of that is it does feel lonely at times um, it can feel very lonely at times and I'm realizing like as much as I don't mind that attachment I don't mind that but I'd like to be able to come back and um, talk to certain people in my inner circle. And when I started sort of having issues with that, which is like when I, again, this whole take your tight away thing was when I started exploring my savior functions more. That's when I started having more issues with that. And that was more in regards to my wife and this guy I work with. Um, but yes, I realize that being so detached, I do not mind. But if I do not have that weight um, to be able to come back to, like to be able to talk to my, my inner circle, then I feel so alone. Like then I feel like a man in space, um, for lack of a better description. I feel like a man in space. Like I feel like I'm floating out here and I'm detached from everything and nobody understands me. That sucks. That sucks. I don't mind being able to go out and come back. That's fucking awesome. Um, I love that. But if I can't come back, oh, does that suck? Um, and it gets bad. It can, it can get bad. I kind of wonder now that I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking about that in regards to, uh, do I want to go into this? All right, I'm going to go into this lightly. In regards to like mass shooters, um, a lot of them will talk about being alone and possibly being bullied and stuff like that. And I'm wondering if it's the same thing of like that detachment. Um, because I'm older, but fuck, like, if I was a teenager, like, I'm so surprised teenagers make it through being a teenager. Because I remember my emotions as a teenager. Just, yeah, it, it was just bad. Anyway, anyway, it's, it's not important. I don't really want to get deep into that. But I'm just saying, like, it can be very lonely. From that perspective, if you're out in a space and you have nobody to like come back to earth with, you feel lost. Um, so, 
Yeah, I'm trying to think. Was there anything else I wanted to cover? No, I can't think of anything. I have been um, doing this thing the last two weeks, week and a half, two weeks, where when I started noticing these tidal wave problems, I didn't fully understand what it was back then, but I started noticing I have issues. I started kind of like pulling back and not really, um, can I said I was blasting more now, talking more because of uh, my savers. I've been trying to pull back and restrict myself and um I'm realizing just like unfortunately that might just have to be something I have to do um to the point where it's just I'm realizing I cannot share um I cannot fully share myself. Um, there are, it's rare. I, I can think of offhand, there are two people I can really fully share myself and they can understand me. Um, or at least one of them I know for certain can understand me. The other, it's not that I don't think they can understand me, it's just they. I suspect they're blast last as well, and I suspect that if they have any issues with what I'm saying, they may not um, they may not fully tell me or express these issues. Uh, but anyway, that's beside the point, I suppose. Um, shit, where am I going with this? Um, but yes, I suspect that. I just have to be more careful as to who I decide to uh, express myself and like how much of myself I decide to give to them. Cause I, I do feel like I'm kind of realizing that I am a bit overwhelming to people. Um, and I, I do see that that can scare people. It can make people uncomfortable. Um, just just due to the nature of my personality I think um, I am as I've been told by several other people I am the weird one or I am the unusual not normal one so and that can be hard to deal with for people um, so yeah which can be difficult to me because everybody wants to feel like they want to fully express themselves but um try to deal with it for the moment i don't know if it's going to be an issue in the future or not but i'm trying to you know do the best i can do um yeah so tell me out with that it's probably why i'm doing this it's therapeutic to be able to express my thoughts and it's also somewhere of a journal I can look back on how I feel about things. Because surprisingly, there's so much going on in your head that, like, if you don't fully vocalize and express stuff. I think that's also because I'm play over sleep. But um, I cannot fully realize how I feel about something. So it's also helpful, helpful for me. To say this out loud, this this YouTube thing, um, you know, starting back doing the channel again, has been like beneficial just in multiple ways. Um, at least for me, um, and I'm pretty much the only person that is benefiting. But for me, I find it to be mutually beneficial. Um, I don't know, maybe one day somebody will stub along and um find some of this interesting i don't know my wife has suggested that i should uh maybe try to make the page bigger um 
I'm not interested in being a YouTuber, so it's kind of whatever. Um, I mean, like, like a a big YouTuber. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to be like a YouTube for persona or anything like that. Um, I don't know. I just like conversation. Although it's really a conversation. Um, I just like expressing thoughts and exercising my mind a little bit. So, yeah, that's why this is beneficial for me. Um, I've been watching Reggie's channel a lot lately. Reginald, the uh, the guy I say that's kind of like my counterpiece. And he's doing... It's not... It's somewhat similar, but it, I wouldn't call it the same. Like, a lot of times he's he's talking about objective personality and some of the things he's doing to... Uh, help him for his daily thing and I found his channel to be immensely beneficial uh, for my own personal thing um, a lot of, like I said I look at him as a counterpiece to me so it's sort of like let's say again back to the chess analogy if he was like the queen on one side I would be the queen on the other side or if he was the bishop on one side I would be the bishop on the other side like we kind of counterbalance each other uh, again that's from my double masculine in our world it's kind of how I picture things a lot um, but yeah I've been really enjoying his channel we talked a few times he's a pretty cool guy he's younger than I am actually I think he's like a uh, this is mid twenties maybe. It's fairly young. Um, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> My mind's wondering at this point, but I don't know. I would love to. Uh, I kind of would love to hear his thoughts, like if he was to ever see the channel. Um, I'm just curious, like. Our temperaments is different. Like, I'm ST and he's NT. I'm sensor thinking and he's in intuitive thinking. And I'm NF and he's SF. So, I'm intuitive feeling and he's sensor feeling. So, like, we're not the same in that regard. But at the same time, I do think we're similar in certain ways. Um, we're just not the same, but we're similar fellow observers I've been observers so um, such an accurate description because I do I just feel like I'm just observing life as it's happening like I said I'm so detached from things and like I said it's also something he's experiencing as well yeah All right, well, wow, we're at 100 minutes already. Um, thank you for having to come across this. I know this is kind of long for most people. Um, this is actually fairly short for me. It's weird. I'm blast last. And there's this thing called coldering. That's what Dan and Shave, Dan and... Dan and Shave, Dave and Shan, um, they call it coldering, where like if you're blast last, you're you're not speaking um, a lot of the stuff you have going on in your mind. So when it comes out, it's kind of like thought vomit. Like it's so much, it just keeps coming like, Bleh! you know, like, oh, I finally got a release. So boom, it's just all coming out. I think that's why my... Uh, why these videos tend to be so long like I'm like oh, okay it's gonna be short I'm gonna be short and then I look up and it's like oh there's an hour you know and it's because everything is just cold during in there because I don't really have anybody to express all of this to um, and it, that's not I have people I can talk to but at the same time I know they're not into the personality thing like that. So it's like I'm trying to 
not overwhelm them with that. So I'm still pulling back a little bit. I don't know. I guess at the end of the day, it's all about finding a balance, I suppose. But yeah, I think that's why I'm just getting on these videos and thought vomiting all over the place. Um, but in a way, this actually helps me organize my thoughts as well. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, I guess all. I doubt. I doubt anybody made it all the way through the video. I. You know what? All right. Anyone who has actually watched this video all the way through, you will have to watch it. If not skimming through it, you had to watch it through to make it this far. Leave me a comment. I'm just curious. Like, if you don't even have to say anything, you can give a thumbs up, thumbs down um, in the comments. Just, I'm just curious if anybody actually makes it through this entire thing. Just, you can, you can put fuck you in the comments. I don't know. Whatever you want. Just, I'm just curious if anybody's actually watching this all the way through. I highly doubt it. I'm not expecting to see anything, but my curiosity. All right. Um, good night or have a nice day, everyone. Um, enjoy your holiday. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.